you join us. So we would like to pick up from where we were a little earlier, just prior to our technical difficulty. Um, and at that point, we had just concluded item six on the agenda, which was item from the public that covered questions and statements. Therefore, we will move on now, please, to item seven, which was petitions from committee members. Members, do any of you have any committee uh, petitions to present? I note for record that there aren't. Therefore, please, item eight is to welcome Steve West to the floor to make any co comments um, regarding uh, your position as chair of the LEP. Thank you. Over to you, Steve. Thank you, Chair. So the lens that we use uh, really is from the business perspective. The LEP board is a partnership between unitary authority leaders and business. Business representatives include universities and uh, NHS, so quite a broad church of members around the table. Um, since the Regional Recovery Plan was signed off in October, of course, we then went into uh, national lockdown uh, and now we're in a tiered lockdown. And of course, all of that is having a significant impact on businesses and businesses are being impacted in various ways across our region. So one of the important things that the LEP has been doing um, through the Regional Recovery Task Force is to get an understanding of the different consequences uh, of COVID-19 on different um, parts of the business community and industries. Clearly, they're not all impacted in the same way. So we've been taking soundings and working very hard, uh, let board members, to understand, to bring information, to bring intelligence into the discussions with uh, colleagues from unitary authorities and the combined authority to make sure that we are able to mobilize support quickly. And I would pay tribute to unitary authority colleagues and the combined authority for being able to swivel and turn relatively quickly in very short time to support uh, businesses. And of course, uh, also at the same point, try to influence government, central government, uh, in the ways in which that support can be delivered. Um, clearly, we're not out of the woods yet. The tiering system means that we are going to have, a, I suspect, another few months of review and resetting, rebasing. And we'll be working as a LEP to make sure that we continue to raise the voice uh, from the business perspective. What all of this has taught us, I think, is that um, a regional recovery approach uh, has been really essential because, as people were saying earlier, we're a relatively small region uh, and people are moving around the region all of the time. So in the papers that we've seen uh, uh, for this particular meeting and for, from uh, individuals that have been presenting, we too welcome um, the uh, information around the uh, rail uh, investments which are very welcomed indeed. Uh, it's glad to see that it's not going to be impacted by recent government announcements. Again a partnership approach with Network Rail, clear alignment to the wider Western Gateway Rail plans. So we look forward to seeing how that investment really does start to impact on the region. We've also uh, been delighted to see the report from WECA submitted to the government's five government's five-year uh, gateway review process which was applied to all of the combined authorities. Again, what that really is about is to ensure that we see value from the uh, impact of combined authorities uh, working in partnership with their unitary authority colleagues, but also with businesses to bring the investment that's very clearly needed across our city region. Just to remind everybody that is about how we invest in skills, how we protect and create new jobs. And we're very clear in our industrial strategy that we want clean, inclusive growth uh, as part of our economy development. Uh, and we also want to see uh, investment in infrastructure. And many of those things are touched on today. Um, it is about additionality. It is about drawing down money that we wouldn't have been able to do on our own. And of course, that's going to be a, a feature going forward. Partnership, working and collaboration is key uh, in everything that we do. Finally, I think I have to say that um, we as a LEP board, uh, the, certainly the business part of the LEP board, were again very supportive of North Somerset joining WECA. We were very disappointed that the consensus to do it within the timeframes that were set 
for the elections uh, in May 2021 were not um, successful. We'll continue, of course, to work uh, across because the LEP actually does bring the four unitary authorities together. Uh, and we hope that uh, in time we will be able to resolve this. So thank you very much, uh, Mayor. Steve, thank you very much. Uh, and again, my personal thanks for you um, for all the incredibly hard work you do, but also please in extending that same appreciation to all those LEP members who again give so much to, uh, to working collectively with us. Thank you. And in that case, thank you very much. I'll just tick that off the list. And the next one on my agenda are comments from the Chair of the Combined Authorities Overview and Scrutiny Commission. That's where I'm always happy to welcome Councillor Steve, Stephen Clark. Stephen. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Bowles. Um, well, it's been a theme of the meeting, really, but I suppose the first thing I would do is refer you to the letter that we wrote <coughs> as a scrutiny commission about the position with WECA and North Somerset. Um, you'll know, I, I hope, that the, the letter was endorsed by all members cross-party, so this isn't a party political matter. Uh, members were very concerned about the position. Um, we, I suppose what we were asking for was clarity about the options. I mean, Shazi has given us some information today about the possibility of a postponement, um, but we need to know about the processes and the timelines. Um, we basically wanted to know what would be needed to make our region a coherent geographical whole. At the moment, it feels a bit like a like a pizza with a couple of giant slice with a giant slice taken out of it, and clearly that can't be um, that can't be the right way to proceed. Um, we've had a, we've had a couple of responses now to the letter, but at least two of the addressees haven't responded, and I would ask them to do so, please, if that's possible. Um, we then talked uh, on a happier note, really. We talked about the strategic rail. Um, we all enthusiastically supported those, um, the proposals. We're especially pleased to hear about the electrification proposals uh, and the work that's been done on, uh, on accessibility to stations. We thought that was, um, that was very important work and we were very pleased to see the priority that that was being given. Um, we supported the creation of the Development Infrastructure Fund and the Housing and Regeneration Enabling Fund. We thought both of those were extremely important. Um, we had quite a detailed discussion about the adult education budget. Members uh, of my committee met in a smaller group to consider pro provisions of that in detail and were well supported by officers um, for which we thank them. Uh, their report of that meeting is attached to my report as an appendix. Um, I suppose they, they welcomed the joined up approach to the adult education budget. That would be the main thing they would say. Um, they also noted the importance of education providers working towards our, our, our carbon budgets. Um, and we trust that's been taken into account. Um, lastly, we welcomed Wecker's investment in We Work For Everyone, um, trying to improve the, the job opportunities for adults with learning difficulties. Uh, we thought that's that's a, a very important initiative, um, and that's that's all I've got. Thank you, Mayor Mayor Bowles. Stephen, thank you very much indeed, and appreciate the work you all put in on our scrutiny commission. And thank you. in that case, we will move on. Please, item ten is comments from the combined authority boards, and this is where I would just remind. Uh, everyone that the four boards that sit regularly respectively the planning and housing transport business and skills uh, they're all attended by the relevant cabinet members i beg your pardon dina you're waving at me i'm sorry i uh sorry i, I actually just wanted to uh, just alert our uh, tech team that uh, the youtube link uh, may not be working so i just wanted to let somebody know Thank you. So thank you, thank you Councillor Romero. I actually do have it on on my iPad, so it's it's working for me. But we will double check. 
Dina, thanks for flagging that. And uh, if there are any colleagues on the YouTube channel, please let Charles or I know if you're having any difficulties. Um, we were just covering off item 10, which was comments from the combined authority boards. And that was just to reassure everybody that each of our uh, respective boards sit, they, are, they comprise the cabinet members from each of our councils. They look at the papers and the items that come to this um, meeting. So just to give you the assurance that those specific comments uh, about each of those items have been taken into account and fed back. I'm pleased just to say I've had a couple of texts from colleagues who are watching us on YouTube and they say that's operating at the moment, Dina, but please, if anybody else hears, you, you can hear <laughs> ping, ping is coming to me as we go. But I'd now like to move on, please, to item 11. Uh, and this is the start of the series of reports that we're going to address today. Uh, and item 11 is around our strategic rail investment plans. And this is looking for formal approval to adopt the 10 year rail delivery programme and to endorse the schemes included as the basis for future rail investment in our region. This proposal or these proposals really do highlight the importance of bringing regional overview and strategic insight into improving our rail services part of course of that ongoing strategy to better connect everybody across the region with a mixture of different options to make sure that we're building that long-term connectivity that we're able to achieve through the combined authority. Um, I'd just like to add that the plan will not be affected by today's announcements. Metro West is a project of real national significance. It's as seen as much through Network Rail, through the Department for Transport, and so on. Um, and that significance was contained in the national infrastructure strategy that was published last week by the government. So alongside other schemes like our regional mass transit, expansion of Metro bus, vision to revolutionize our rail network is really vital to getting our region moving, bringing to an end those decades of underinvestment. Um, so I'm very happy now to move the recommendations in the report. I'm going to need to find a second, uh, both for the elements that relate to the combined authority and a second, uh, please, for the elements that relate to the joint committee. It might be suitable, therefore, if it was a member who sits on both. Dina, you're waving. Are you indicating you'd like to second? I am. Yes, Mayor. Would you like me to speak as well or may I speak as well? After you've unmuted. Thank you. So for the record, Shazia, uh, Councillor Romero has seconded both set of recommendations and I'd invite each of you to speak in turn. And Dina, as you're off mute, please, would you start? Thank you. Well, you know, obviously I welcome um, this investment. Um, you know, if we are to move towards more sustainable modes of transport, you know, clearly access to local services needs to meet local need. And, you know, obviously I appreciate too that time in, in railways is uh, significantly different even to that of local government. So having a 10 year delivery plan is key to achieving our ambitions on change and on sustainability. But my only slight disappointment, but it hasn't, you know, marred it enough that I wouldn't second and support this paper, is that Saltford remains a scheme that could come forward in the next 10 years. Thank you. Dina, thank you very much. If you don't mind, I'll take you in the order I can see you at the moment, giving you my screen shuffle. If I go Toby, Don, Marvin, and then Steve, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just to echo um, some of the points uh, made to, to really welcome us being able to take this regional and pan-regional approach to the future of, of rail. Um, I think delivering these complementary strategies will also serve to dramatically enhance the already powerful uh, connectivity offer of, of the Western Gateway extending to South Wales and, and I think demonstrates why the West of England is such a central focus um, for, for that geography and, and, and really on the radar of government and others for, for, this, for this sort of investment. From a South Gloucestershire perspective, I think these rail enhancements are vital uh, to supporting uh, the sustainable development um, uh, of Yate and Charfield. Um, 
The programme also includes uh, important enhancements um, uh, and redevelopment at Bristol Parkway, which of course is a focal arrival and trans transition point um, for, for South Gloucestershire and, and, and in the uh, and, and in a part of the region that it is, is the most economically successful. Um, and I just wanted to echo the points of one of the speakers uh, earlier, my colleague on South Gloucestershire Council, uh, Councillor Brian Allenson. Um, you know, he has, and along with his ward colleagues, uh, campaigned relentlessly to, in, to, to see uh, improvements being made to that very noticeable uh, pinch point uh, underneath the Parkway Railway Bridge. Um, and uh, pay tribute to his work in, in getting that included in a document that does have to be jointly agreed with Network Rail. It isn't just something that we can agree ourselves as the combined authority. Um, uh, and if I could just make a few more comments around Yate, uh, and, and I think it's, it's really important when we're then linking with other pieces of work that we're doing as a combined authority and integrating everything. Uh, Yate is our largest town. Um, and through the master planning work that committee members have already agreed to resource, you know, that work is reimagining the town centre uh, alongside increased frequency of rail services. The prospect, the exciting prospect of a uh, transformed Yate train station uh, and the development of the park and ride um, uh, just a couple of hundred metres away, demonstrating that integrated transport offer uh, and investment in sustainable travel that we're delivering as a combined authority. So I'm very happy to support the recommendations today. Toby, thank you very much. Uh, Don, please, as a vital part of our connections into North Somerset and even to Pill, of course. With the of course, yes, thank you. Yes, yeah, so we, we do have a railway line, um, which is, I saw being used yesterday and today. Um, so, yes, thank you. I think you echo Toby's comments around the importance of a regional approach to, to transport to transport delivery. So I, I would certainly welcome the paper. I'm really pleased about the, the update in terms of the funding, uh, despite the comments around Network Rail's more national budget. That, 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 that's pleasing to know. Um, I guess my only slight concern is, is, is you know, a 10 year plan and the time. And we keep getting told by government we have to do things quickly yet we seem to be massed and mired in bureaucracy about doing any, any rail scheme. So I think we have plenty of shovel-ready projects in rail. Um, and it's if the government got itself moving, we better deliver them for the residents and perhaps meet some of our climate emergency goals rather than wait until after 2030 to deliver some of the rail issues. In terms of that, in terms of climate emergency, um, I was a mite disappointed on in appendix one on which is page 37 in my papers about no comment around electrification to our port because i thought that was a government policy that we should have electric rail to to electrified rail to all ports and certainly a major port like the bristol would be important um, and i would be um letting my residents down in north somerset welcome the extra funding for station enhancements welcome those at Nails in Backwell Station, but clearly we have a lot more to do in terms of the dis disability access to parts of that station. Welcome the fact we're going to make some, some improvements we're in, in a pretty difficult location, but it does need an awful lot more work doing to make it truly accessible for, for people with disabilities. So, But overall, extremely supportive of the paper, so thank you. Dr. Don, thank you very much. Um, and yes, I think what you're highlighting is in spite of the great strides we're making and planning, there's still so much more to do around rail. Marvin, we, we had a meeting earlier today around old Temple Mead to Temple Quarter, positive meetings with Network Rail as well. But um, so there's lots going on in that space. Your, your thoughts around any elements of this paper, my friend? No, we welcome it um, um, also. Obviously, um, we think it's, it's Good news for further investment in our public transport offer, um, and actually, just um, off the back of what Toby said as well, just about the importance of the West of England as a central hub within the Western Gateway as well. Um, so I think that that bringing that connectivity here is really good news. Um, very specifically, the um, uh, Metro West uh, Phase One A Seven Beach to Westbury lines increased frequency is very welcome. Um, I just raised the issue of, of accessibility as well, um, uh, uh, Tim. So there is 
we need to this, we have to uh, do the work of making sure that the stations we bring through are accessible we have a number of stations in bristol that are just not and involve uh just just unacceptable um inconvenience for people who are unable to to climb stairs and go from platform to platform um so for a truly um accessible and equal fair public transport system we need to keep driving on that front also but Marvin, thank you, and, and very much echo that point around the accessibility. Yes, we are trying to address those uh, challenges that go back many years in that lack of investment. So yes, you're absolutely right, and there's a, a programme in there. Steve, you touched on uh, Metro West in your earlier comments. Was there anything you'd like to add? No, I just uh, obviously welcome the same as colleagues. This is the beginning. This isn't the end. Like This is the starting gun being fired. Um, there needs to be clearly investment over and above this to really begin to connect our infrastructures up and get our public transport working effectively and efficiently and in a way that does meet the accessibility needs of our communities but this is a really good start um, and I think the other thing I would say is that we've got to learn um, how to deliver these uh, efficiently effectively with pace but also control Lots of these big projects, you see cost overrun. Um, what we mustn't do is get caught in that trap. So again, um, keep the pressure on government to make sure that this is delivered at pace uh, so that we can make sure that the investment starts to pay back, but also gives us a platform to then build for future um, uh, bids in for public transport. Steve, thank you. And just very quickly before we go to the voting on that, again, absolutely endorse that that a part around, I think, the way in which we have started working uh, through the combined authority with Network Rail and also operators has allowed us to really start challenging and pushing things forward that simply were getting stuck. Uh, and also around the accessibility points that both you and, you know, reflecting back on Marvin, that's again, I think the opportunity we have through the combined authority by setting our standards for our new stations that are going to be meeting those needs whilst we're looking at investment retrospectively on those old ones. So thank you all for your comments there. We'll now move to the voting. We'll take this in two stages, if we may. I'd be proposing that we take items one, two, and four on block. Um, so that is for members of the joint committee. So please would I ask members of the joint committee to indicate if they are in favor of recommendations one, two, and four, please. Shazia, I know you were just looked up. I was happy that everybody indicated thus. You're happy as well. Thank you. And then for item three, please may I ask the members of the WECA committee to indicate if you are in favour of recommendation three. Shazia, I'm happy if you are that everybody has indicated accordingly, therefore. Yes, those recommendations are approved. We'll move on now to item 12, Local Enterprise Partnership and Invest Bristol and Bath budget outturn between April and September 2020. There is a significant amount of uh, investment and detail within that report. We're not actually asked to make any actual decisions here uh, other than to formally note, which I'll ask us all to do in a moment, but I'd just like to open it up to comments, please, if I may, from, from everybody concerned, as this covers the LEP. So that covers all of the authorities. So again, are there any members? Tina, would you like to make any comments? Toby, no, Don, Marvin, Steve, any other comments? In that case, please, we are asked to formally note the report and also the two recommendations. So Shazia for due process, to record that they were formally noted. Thank you. Item 13 is the Local Enterprise Partnership One Front Door Funding Programme. And this is our latest uh, LEP On Front Door Programme report for consideration by the committee. Um, again, a lot of work goes into this. There's some very significant investment proposals in here covering a further 13.7 million pounds 
that has been secured for the region through the Getting Building Fund. I wasn't much sure if there was another better in there, but no, it's the Getting Building Fund. Um, 12 million of this is being utilised to meet the local growth fund over programming, enable full funding and completion of those projects. There's one new project, the Western Stores, which is to be added to the programme, for which a business case is being developed. Um, so the report also presents the latest proposed scheme changes in relation to projects funded through the local growth fund, the economic development fund and the revolving infrastructure fund. Again, members, I'm very happy to move the recommendations. Um, there are, may I look for a seconder, please? So, Toby, thank you. In terms of seconding both of those recommendations, just invite people to speak if they'd like to. Toby, was there anything you'd like to start with? I'll go around and give everybody a chance, don't worry. There wasn't, Chair, no. Thank you. In that case, Don, please. Yeah, thank you. I, I mean, I, I clearly welcome the, the, the work around, around Western General Stores. Um, but the overall program, again, a, a regional approach to getting the economy moving, get these projects out as quickly as we possibly can. The only comment I would make is, can we do our level best to use local suppliers on as many of these projects as we possibly can? Thank you. Don, thank you very much indeed. Um, if we go Marvin, Dina, and then Steve, please. I've got nothing to add. Dina, was there anything you'd like to add? Um, only a very small um, matter, which is, uh, so, you know, obviously I note, note the change requests which relate um, in us uh, for Bath and Aussie Somerset to um, schemes are predominantly around uh, Bath Keys, but I just wanted to draw people's attention to uh, one of those, which is the bridge across the, the River Avon. Uh, so this is the first uh, bridge across the River Avon in Bath for 100 years. So I always hope that any quibbles about any extra could take that into account. Thank you. D Dina, thank you. And I'm sure we've all noted that for future reference. But point to and Steve, any, any thoughts again, money that uh, is so, so important from the LEPS input, please. Yeah, I think my only comment, uh, Chair, is that this is uh, obviously that the 13 million was welcomed, but is a drop in the ocean. And my big challenge, frankly, is uh, lots of this funding obviously is coming to an end and I haven't really got a clear view of what next. And I know that that's tricky, obviously, because of the spending round. But I do think at some point we're going to need to know where we can go longer term because this investment is about kickstarting the economy. It is about trying to ensure that we're match fit, match ready for reskilling in particular, um, uh, as we see our economy changing um, and also making sure that we um, are doing this work at pace to have an impact. And that's what the beauty of some of these projects are, that they actually get off the ground quite quickly. Um, so I do think we need to ask some hard questions as, we're, as we come out of COVID about what next. Steve, Steve, thank you. Good point and a, and a good challenge for all of us. So thank you. In that case, we'll just now move to the voting. So the first recommendation is for all of the joint committee, myself to vote on. Please, would you indicate uh, if you are in favour? Just for the sake of the, uh, for, for Shazia, I've been happy. I can see everybody who's indicating thus and you are. Thank you. And the second one to approve the change request for both the EDF and RAF program. Um, looking to our constituent councils, please, would you indicate if you are in favour of those proposed, that proposal and recommendation? Shazia, again, I'm happy I've been able to see everybody as long as you are for the record. Perfect. Thank you so much. Item 14 is uh, the Becker and Mayoral budget outturn. And the report presents the latest revenue budget financial outturn information, for both the combined authority and the mayoral budget. A lot of information there uh, involved. 
Um, I'm going to, with everybody's indulgence, move, move quickly forward to say again, I'm very happy that uh, we've done a lot of work there. I'm very keen, whilst we're just due to note this report, to see if there are any members who would like to make any comments to the report. So I'm looking at Toby shaking his head, Tina, Marvin, Donald, Steve, any comments? I'll just say quickly, um, uh, Tim, just about the continuation of concessionary fare payments and the, the contract payments as well, just this welcome. Um, just helps us uh, remain connected. We have areas, you know, the existing transport property and that food, that bus network is absolutely uh, vital. So um, yeah, just really welcome that. Excellent, thank you. If there were no other comments, members, we will record for the minute that that was duly noted. Thank you very much. Members are happy. I'm just going to carry on with the meeting. Um, hoping we'd had sufficient time for a short break a little earlier. So in that case, yes, we'll continue now on to uh, item 15, which is the investment fund report. There is a huge amount in this report around, if you like, the, the very, uh, if you like, the, the premium that we all get from being part of a combined authority and that core devolution funding. So some significant projects coming here, forward here. Uh, I'd like to say to everybody who is watching us that there's a very clear value for money framework that be, backs up all of these projects to make sure that we apply all of the rigour of the local growth assurance framework by which we ha have to report. And actually on that basis, we are subject, and a lot of people may not be aware of this, but as a combined authority, we are subject to five yearly government gateway reviews that assess the impact and the outcomes of those investment funds. And the company that are brought in by the government to do those assessments have recently completed their first assessment and have reported back to government with a very positive uh, report on how we have invested our money during, since the start. So again, very big thanks to everybody here for the significant support and work and engagement that's gone on to deliver such a positive report, but the opportunity for us today to be looking at some really important schemes. So just looking at a few of them quickly, the new development infrastructure fund is hopefully going to help us unlock over 1400 new homes in Hengrove, um, an allocation again into another re regeneration enabling funds there, again, to allow us to develop and unlock significant public private sector investment. We've got the significant investment in the outline business case for Charfield Station, hugely important to that part of the region. The full business case work around Chu Valley Lake, again, which works on so many levels for all of us in those things that we're all trying to develop as a region. So I'm not going to go into any more detail there because I'm sure members might like to reflect on some of those. We have 13 recommendations here. So I'm very happy to move all of those if I could look for a seconder, please. Thank you, Toby. Just beat Marvin to it. So perhaps Toby, as you seconded, perhaps if we could ask you to uh, share any thoughts, then I'll go to Marvin and then to Dina and to Steve. Uh, thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, so as per um, just linking back to an earlier report that we had around the strategic rail investment, um, really pleased to see this investment in, in master planning, uh, notably for, for the East Fringe, Seven Side, and, and that important growth area around Parkway Station. Um, they represent our key locations uh, in, the, in the sustainability of our economy here in the West of England. Um, through that WECA funding that we have already been able to secure, been able to develop comprehensive master plan approaches in both Kingswood and Yates over the last year. That work is supporting us in how we identify sites for commercial investment, um, through which that we can then be an instigator uh, in the delivery of regeneration rather than merely policy makers. Uh, similarly, with the resources for, for DIF funding, um, us as unitary authorities were able to access the resource to, to promote development in key strategic sites where the market is facing 
new pressures that, that threaten delivery. Uh, the master planning funding for Parkway will enable us to commission the first phase of works to explore the boring of a new subway under the main line uh, at Parkway Station, which will which would represent significant improvements in in both connectivity and and safety, and reflects uh, the the comments um, from uh, Councillor Brian Allenson earlier in the meeting. I'm delighted to see that Charfield Station has reached the strategic outline business case stage, and hope we can continue to progress through uh, the ne the next stages with Network Rail. Uh, to rapidly move on to, to the next stage. Uh, Charfield's an important development location in delivering new homes in South Gloucestershire um, and will provide an attractive and sustainable travel option to, to Gloucester, Yate and Bristol. Uh, finally, I'd just like to welcome the funding that we're proposing for, for Hengrove. Um, I think uh, this is a really important regional uh, project for us. Um, it's clearly in our regional interest uh, to, to help to, to maximise the delivery of housing uh, within Bristol, um, helping uh, the city to meet its its own housing need, um, and thereby reducing the unmet need uh, that that we as the surrounding unitary authorities have got to address within our own local plans. Um, so uh, very much welcome a lot of positive things in this report today. So, Toby, thank you very much. So, so perhaps go Marvin, Dina, and Steve. Marvin, any thoughts on the recommendations in the paper, please? Yeah, well, I'll just pick up the one following on from Toby there on, on Hengrove. This is a part of the city that's been identified for housing for a very long time and has never been brought through. Uh, and now, um, uh, you know, with that commitment and working together, we're bringing it through, which is hugely significant. Um, and you just look at the scale of this for over 1,400 homes. Um, but in addition to that, 12,000 square metres of new employment, commercial, retail, education, community space and public park as well. So it's, it's building uh, communities uh, within the city and building um, the economy. And uh, going back to a point that was made earlier on about local supply chains, we've been impressing upon all those companies that want to get stuff built in Bristol, uh, the importance of looking to the local supply chain and working with us to make sure that we're getting that multiplier going uh, within our economic region. Um, so yeah, just uh, very welcome. And um, uh, the new chair of Homes England uh, was making the point that housing is one of the uh, the most significant interventions we can make to improve in life chances. Um, but I would add to that, the kind of homes we build and where we put them will, will be among the biggest determinants of our planetary impact, both in terms of climate and on ecology uh, as well. So uh, we're gonna make this a flagship development, be in line with the SDGs, um, our climate strategy, our ecological strategy, which we are keeping front and centre of what we do. It's not just uh, window dressing there, we're, we're making it centre. Um, so, yes, yeah, really welcome. Marvin, well, I mean, thank you very much indeed. Dina, your thoughts and then Steve, please. Thank you very much, Tim. Well, just trying to uh, think where, where to... to uh, perhaps on the same point that um, others have uh, spoken of about the development uh, at Hengrove. And, and I think you know, one of the interesting things about Weka is it's, a, it's about development and investment in the region. So I think we always need to bear that in mind when we are looking at schemes is how do they, you know, what is their impact on our region? And with, with Hengrove, I'm actually quite happy to support this. Um, as because of the scale of it, it looks to me, and I hope this is the case, that it will take some of the pressure that up till now has been put on surrounding areas uh, such as Whitchurch. Um, you know that that uh, as uh, you know, over a number of meetings we've had, uh, public speakers come and speak of their concerns uh, about the um, what is perceived to be unsustainable development that could be pushed into into that that village um so i'm i'm very happy to to support that part and also then sticking with the idea of uh, villages uh, and high streets and we can see all of our high streets including those in our cities um are, are changing they were changing before the pandemic but um as a result of the pandemic, they are changing much more rapidly 
And, you know, I think the investment in our high streets, in uh, places such as the you know, Milsom Quarter in, in Bar City, uh, you know, will be incredibly helpful uh, as we move forward. And then uh, just uh, bringing us back to the, the great outdoors, I absolutely am delighted that uh, we will have uh, the Chew Valley Trail uh, supported. Um, you know, I think this gives great benefit, not just to those in Bath and North East Somerset, but also to, to all of us as well, to, to get out there and to enjoy uh, our outside space. Dina, thank you very much. And, and Steve, any, any thoughts from yourself, please? Um, yes, thank you. I mean, obviously this is really good news, but um, I want us to look at this through the lens of a real opportunity to do something different. Many of the places that we've built previously are pretty dull, boring, and really not that great. So in looking at this, I'm sure the planners have taken on board the learning from previous big developments. And as Dina has said, getting the place right so that it's a great place to live, work, um, and bring up children where that's um, something that people want to do is essential. And COVID-19 has taught us how important that external space is. Uh, so getting it right, let's be very ambitious about what we're doing on these sites. Let's be innovative. Let's be creative in terms of how we build, what we build, where we build and how we connect it. And also take the opportunity to think about, does this bring in clearly um, new opportunities for sustainable developments and building schemes that deliver buildings in a different way. So modern approaches to new design will open up all sorts of thinking around new jobs and new ways of sustaining the environment. So let's be ambitious and, and really go for this. And um, while we're doing that, also recognize we have got one big mountain to climb in terms of the overall numbers of housing that we are going to need over the next um, period. And the spatial plan was really trying to signal that that investment is going to be essential. So it's great news, but it's the beginning again. It's the starting pistol. So Steve, thank you very much. And a good context set to set her there in that sense. Don, I appreciate this is the work of funds, but I'm always very keen if there was any comments you'd like to add to any of the members. Thank you very much, Don. So in that case, please, if members are happy, I propose that we move uh, all 13 recommendations uh, as one. Um, we've had a, I've moved and we've had a second. So please may I ask uh, combined authority members to indicate if they are happy and content and approve all of those 13 recommendations, please. Thank you. I note for the record, Charles here, I saw everybody indicate thus, so I hope you're happy with that. I see you nodding, which is always good to see. Thank you. That takes us to item 16, the adult education budget, uh, where we are asked to consider the approach for the 2021-22 academic year. Um, and this seeks the approval for the proposed approach for the management administration of that devolved funding that comes to us as part of being a combined authority. Um, and again, the overall aim here is really just to orientate the local adult education system. Uh, so making sure it's focused on being responsive to the specific needs of our region's residents, communities, employers. And again, very much one of those advantages of having a combined authority where we're able to do this, which you wouldn't necessarily see in other parts of the country. Something I'm very passionate about seeing us progress. Again, very happy to move the recommendations and please may I look for a second hour. Thank you, Dina. Uh, and again, look just to see members if you have any comments. So as Dina, you started, perhaps we could start with you, please. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Chair. As, as you say, there, there is a real advantage actually to being part of, of WECA and being part of a combined authority, particularly uh, as um, we have um, a remit around skills. And I think the ability to uh, react, uh, particularly in such changing and challenging times um, and be able to invest in skills, I think, well, I hope will be to our area's advantage in the future. So I'm very happy to support this paper. Thank you. 
as I can see you in, in order, Toby, Marvin and Steve, please. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Tim. Uh, just, yeah, I'd like to uh, welcome welcome the reports. Um, uh, we, know, we know how challenging it is uh, for our regional economy um, and how many people are, uh, have been losing their jobs. Um, uh, and this is this is a really important area of work for the combined authority into sort of helping people back into work, helping them to to reskill. Uh, particularly in those industries uh, of the future, um, particularly those linked to to our transition towards net zero carbon. Um, so uh, I'm happy to support the report. Toby smashing. Oh, Marvin, any thoughts or comments you'd like to make around this piece? Yeah, again, about that, I mean, it's, an, it's going to be an incredibly difficult time and in, in making opportunities for reskilling available to people um, is going to be hugely significant, not just for the functioning of the economy, but I think also for hope and mental health as people continue to need something constructive in their lives and they're going to need some structure to, to stay in their lives. A um, couple of quick things. We are particularly welcoming of the support for Bristol Community Learning uh, Service. That's uh, very welcome. Um, but on top of that, the you know, you know what this can do uh, to help consolidate and provide stability in our skills offer is really important with that emphasis on collaboration uh, it's going to be a wickedly challenging time and we need providers to be collaborating to avoid doubling up and um, in, engaging in wasteful um, activities so so that's going to be a big uh, big part of the, the role here as well but um, it's, it's welcome Marvin wonderful thank you Steve but very keen Clearly, you'll have a let perspective, but but also, I'm really conscious of the great work you do at UE around integrating with some of our FE colleges as well. But but really, just very quickly, keen to get your your thoughts on on the AEB approach. So very, I mean, very welcomed. And I just echo Marvin's um, comment there. I think the only way that that really we're going to stand a chance of being able to help people is is if we have a really strong ecosystem schools, colleges, universities working together to create the opportunities with business. So there's a piece of work that has to be done, which is um, the needs analysis, which I think we can do very quickly. Where are the jobs? Where, what are we trying to attract in? What's the best way of reskilling uh, folk as they potentially lose jobs as, as areas shrink? So partnership and collaboration is absolutely key and not wasting and duplicating and fighting amongst each other. Really, really important. Steve, thank you very much. Don, again, appreciate technically this is uh, through Weka, but I am, as many people know, a huge fan of, of Western as one of our four really good FE colleges in the same way that we have four brilliant universities. So I didn't know if there was anything you'd like to add or reflect on. Well, extremely supportive of Western College, do a wonderful job, but of course we're denied any access to this funding, aren't we, because we're not part of the West of England Combined Authority, so it's a rather um, difficult question for you to ask in a, in a public meeting, isn't it? So I'm going to stop there. Don, thank you. That uh, Yes, I, I was referencing the fact that Western are very much part of our RFE network, but thank you nonetheless. Um, so we have two recommendations here. Um, please, we have the same voting arrangements for both. So again, if record members are happy, I'd like to propose we take them together. And in that case, please, may I ask you to indicate if you are in favour of the two recommendations as shown, please. Thank you. I just note for the record, Shazia, I could see everybody indicating as much. So thank you very much. That finishes item 16. Item 17 is the appointment of the returning officer for the combined authority mayoral election. The report here seeks formal approval in relation to the appointment of the returning officer for the 2021 combined authority mayoral election. And I'm very happy to move that recommendation. May I just seek a formal seconder, please? Toby, just beat Dina to, the, to it. Thank you so much. Uh, members, uh, is there anything you'd like to add? Yeah, Toby, Dina, 
Marvin, Steve. Nothing from me, Tim. No. No. Thank you very much. Yep. And in that case, please, could we just formally uh, indicate if we are approving that recommendation, please, from the combined authority members? Uh, again, I note for the record, Charles, here I could see indications from everybody who approved that. Um, item 18 is an information item. And so as we just start to draw the meeting to the close, Please, it's just to note that details of the decisions that are taken at this meeting and the draft minutes of this meeting will be published on the Combined Authority website as soon as is practically possible. Uh, that then really just brings me to the conclusion of the meeting. May I thank everybody who has attended the committee and the officers supporting, those members of the public who've joined us on the YouTube channels. Thank you for joining us. Uh, our apologies for any of the slight technical issues that happened before. I'm sure we will all look upon this as constructive learning and make sure we try to address any of those challenges in the past. Though I have to say to date, uh, I've been incredibly impressed with the support from both our technical people and our councils around delivering these meetings. So thank you to everybody in concerned. Mindful this is the last time we're meeting formally before Christmas. So a uh, little bit of an early happy Christmas and uh, I will look forward to seeing you all in the new year and hope we've got slightly better outlook or brighter outlook then. So on that note, uh, the clock on my computer says it's 15.55. So at this point, I'll declare the meeting officially closed and thank you all again. Appreciate your time. Take care. Stay safe, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>